Praise the Lord. I want to congratulate you for making it into this wonderful year. My name is Witness Ken Paul Obieke. This is Heaven's Mandate. I am bringing to you the message that you need in time and eternity to make it on earth and to be in heaven. Our uh, best uh, wish uh, for you out there is that this year will be the best year you have ever had since birth. And I want you to quickly follow me into this series that will bring a total turnaround in your life. I'm ministering on the exceeding power of love. The exceeding power of love. I want you to Quickly move with me into First Corinthians chapter number twelve, verse thirty-one says, "But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way." Love is called a more excellent way, a more excellent way to whatever is. The desire you have as a child of God. Why? Because love is God and God is love. Many people do not understand that there is great power in love. And that is why the Christianity that most of us today are practicing are more of witchcraft. Because Jesus Christ having understood the power of love, gave it as the only commandment. But it has been put aside for all manner of religious uh, foolishness. Now, look at uh, chapter 13 of First Corinthians. It says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have no charity, I am become a sounding brass or a twinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and I understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have no charity, I am nothing. Now, it is good to understand that most of us in the church today are nothing. The reason being because the commandment of Jesus Christ to love one another is not what we observe. And there is no power that is greater than the power of love. God himself is the greatest power. And God is love. I want to show you something and then I explain to you something that is going to transform you, that will help you. Because you, you, you might think I'm talking about uh, the uh, natural love. No. I'm talking about God's kind of love, the agape love, the love that is God, that controls all power, that created all things. Now, look at uh, uh, the first 13 of this chapter, 13 of 1 Corinthians. It says, And now abided faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Charity here is talking about love. Uh, recently, there was a, uh, a poll about 10 richest pastors in the whole world. And it happened to be that five of the 10 pastors were from Nigeria, which shows that this country needs prayers. Because uh, when a pastor is not rich towards God, then he will become rich to himself. And uh, uh, in other words, he is no better than uh, members of secret society. And that is what we are seeing, you know, uh, everywhere. When a pastor is richer than the whole congregation, 
and then poor people are contributing tight a cost to you what you know when you have love you will be rich towards god and there is something that i want you to understand so that you can begin to practice the power that is called love the word of the lord we read now said something he said something about faith and you know how important faith is the bible tells us that we are saved by grace through faith so faith is not something you play with and the bible says that without faith no man can please god but here we are being shown that love is greater than faith now in uh, galatians chapter 5 verse 6 the bible says something about circumcision or no circumcision are valid nothing but uh, faith that worked by love in other words if you have faith and your faith is so huge it's so big but there is no love that your faith is not a working faith i was given an example when i was um, rendering a message about love being the battery of your faith and i i used an example of a handset as important as your handset is, if you remove the battery, that handset is useless. And that is what love is to faith. And so when so many people's prayers are not being answered, like many Christians today, their prayers enter voicemail. When many Christians today, their prayers are not answered, and many of us cannot move in the power of God, what you need to do is go and check the power of your love. What is the level of of love you have and i said earlier that this is not natural love this is god's unconditional love i'm taking this in series because you cannot afford to operate without love this year and i want to make you understand something that without love you can never make heaven most of the people you see in hellfire are people who did not practice love because love is the commandment of jesus christ but you look at what is happening today. Religious people will be more interested in things that are not weightier matters than preaching love. They will be more conscious of things that will not take anybody anywhere. Don't brush your mouth. Don't use toothpaste. Don't comb your hair. Look tattered. And they leave the weightier matter. When you understand why the Bible says you should forgive others, so that you'll be forgiven. Then you will see the power of love. Many of us, we are celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ, but they didn't know that we are celebrating the birth of love. In fact, it will help you more if you begin from today. Wherever you see Jesus Christ or you see God, you remove it and put love. It will help you more to operate in the level you have never operated before spiritually. Let me show you something quickly. In the book of 1 John chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 11, it says, For this is the message that ye had from the beginning, that we should love one another. This is the message. That is the message of Christianity. That is the message of Christ. But the issue is now, do we really love one another? What does it mean to love one another? If the church of Jesus Christ, the church of today, will return to this very message of love. I'm not talking about natural love. I'm talking about God's kind of love. How did God love us? The Bible says in the book of John chapter 3 verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him will not perish. How did he love us? He loved us when we were not lovable. The love of God is unconditional. As you are listening to me right now, you might be uh, questioning God for uh, lack of answer to your prayers or powerless Christian life. Instead for you to go and check the battery of your faith, which is love, to find out whether that battery is being charged. How many people are you holding in your prison in unforgiveness? The year has just started. Many of us have made resolutions. Many of us are praying that this year will be better than the next year. But I want you to understand that if you don't understand this message, you are nowhere. Now, the word of the Lord said in verse 2, 
not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him, because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. This one is titled Satanic Churches. Most of the churches you see everywhere today are satanic because they are no more preparing people for heaven. And moreover, Satan has transformed himself into angel of light and is deceiving a lot of people through the church. Now, this one is titled Time is Finished. When you finish reading this, you will get born again, again, and again. There's no more time. The angels that are going to blow the trumpet of rapture were shown to me showing that there's no more time and many are not yet ready this one is the judgment day how will you stand on that day here you will see revelation of how the great the mighty the low we are judged this book will help you to be able to stand well that day and be able to escape the wrath of god this one is tied to you and your pastor mosiadis if you have not read this we have not read anything there are things in this book that will open your eyes and make you wiser than the serpent. Now, this one is called Tears in Heaven. The book of life was revealed to be empty and Jesus Christ was shedding tears. I want to ask you, is your name in this book of life? When you read this book, you will know what I'm talking about. This one is called Pure Prosperity. Some wonder whether children of God are meant to prosper. Prosperity is part of our salvation. Salvation is total package. When you read this book, you will know the difference between the mundane prosperity and the totality of the prosperity that every true child of God is supposed to have. A few days ago, the Lord woke me up in the midnight and sat me down. And began to take me through why many people will not make heaven. He said, I forgive them, but they cannot forgive. I love them, but they cannot love. And why there is powerlessness in the prayers of many people. Why he does not answer the prayers that are prayed in his name. Because when you say in Jesus' name, you are saying in the name of love. And if you are not practicing love and you are saying in the name of Jesus Christ, you are impersonating. You are a criminal. And that is what many of us are in the church today. Now, the word of the Lord said, He said, not as Cain, who was of that which, uh, uh, that uh, wicked one, and slew his brother. And when you speak about against people, not to correct them, but to destroy them, you are killing them. So you are a murderer. And the Bible says that he that hates his brother is a murderer. I want to tell you the truth. Many of us that answer Christians today are murderers. And have no where they are going near heaven. Despite all their religious stupidity and foolishness. Now, the word of the Lord says here. It says, because his own works were evil and his brothers righteous. I'm still in verse 12. Verse 13. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. We know that we have uh, passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Now look at that. When you are not practicing love, you are abiding in death. Death here means defeat, means failure, means complete separation from God, means a whole lot of things. That is what you are abi abiding in because you did not love that person. And do you know what happens to us most of the time? We want to see reason we should love somebody. No, you don't need to see any reason to love anybody because God did not see any reason to love you. You need to just love because Christ loved you or God loved you to send Jesus. When you look at that person, when you love that person that is not lovable, you are loving Jesus because there's no way you can prove to God that you love him except through the people that are around you. Except through the people he has created. Now, when you look at what this scripture says here, it says, we know that we have passed uh, from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Many negative things that happen in our lives is because we do not love each other. Now, this message of love is important for you to start the year with it 
because that is what is going to place you in the real realm whereby you can be able to receive the blessings of God. And if Christ come, you'll be able to make heaven. Now, the next verse says, Whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. Now, help me to count how many murderers are around, including yourself. Whosoever hated his brother. There is reason to hate people. But when you come to understand that God is love and love is God, you will not make mistake to hate that person. Even when the person hates you, even when the person does things that will make you to hate the person, you will avoid it. That's why knowledge is very, very important. That's why knowledge is power. That was why Jesus Christ come, could pray for the people that crucified him in the pain of the cross and say, forgive them for they don't know what they are doing. If he didn't pray that prayer for them, you have not entered heaven. Because he knew the power of love. And now the Bible says here, Whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer had eternal life abiding in him. Now, it will be very surprising on that day to see many of us that think that they are, they are uh, uh, religious, they are holy, enter hell. They don't have eternal life because they don't have love. Condemnational spirit, judgmental spirit, some of them feel they will make heaven because they earn it by their works, because they are qualified by their looks, by their deeds, and by their that. You see, ignorance is the greatest destroyer, not Satan. Now, something happened. I was in a, in a place, within this uh, season, we were busy moving from town to town in crusades. Heaven was happy. Because hell was in trouble. Souls were being harvested. People's lives were being touched everywhere we moved to. And something happened in a particular town. There was an idol that cursed the whole town. Swallowed the blessings of the people. When the Lord showed me this revelation in the night, before the day of the crusade, I saw how this thing was tormenting people. I, was, I, I, I understood what the Bible meant when he said Christ moved with compassion. I was moved in compassion in that revelation to, to attack this very masquerade. Because what it was doing to the people was terrible. Could you believe it? That the following day, on the last day of the crusade, that very idol was arrested at the crusade ground physically, and everybody saw it. Arrested, disgraced, and every blessing it was holding away from the people were released. When you don't have love, you can't move in power. I'm not talking about those who are using occultic power. I'm not talking about those who are using familiar spirit. If you are a true child of God, you cannot operate the power of God without love, because God is love. Now, the word of the Lord went on and said uh, uh, something in verse 15. And I want you to take note of it and see that love is what is going to play a major role for people making heaven. Our uh, 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 foremost assignment is to depopulate hell and populate heaven. It says, we know that we have, uh, sorry, verse 15, it says, whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. I want you to look at yourself and ask yourself, how many people I hate? How many people are still in my hate prison and begin to release them if you want to move forward? Now, it says, And he know that no mother had eternal life abiding in him, hereby perceive with the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Now, listen. If we look at what we call Christianity today, and are frank, we will find out that we all have failed Christ. 